Welcome to the WAN Show, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. We've got a fantastic show lined up for yeah. you today. Of course, the big news this week was Apple making the very un-Apple move of creating a self-service repair program in the most Apple possible way because there was a gun to their head and their arm twisted behind their back. <laughs> Gotta freaking love it. In other big controversial news, Streamlabs, which is now... <clears throat> Streamlabs, not Streamlabs OBS, has been involved in a public tiff with the makers of OBS or Open Broadcast and software? others. Open Open Broadcaster software. That's what it's short for, right? I think it's just broadcast. System or is it system? Software. What's, I think. what's the S for? Uh oh. Wow, this is embarrassing. Yeah. Oh, broadcaster. Yeah, you're right. Open Broadcaster software. There we go. All right. What else we got this week? NFT Bay, uh, a a pirate bay for NFTs. Wait, it's, are you serious? It's there are a pirated NFT. Okay, we'll talk about that. Wait, you didn't know that? No, I hadn't. Thought. You don't know about right click save as? Oh my goodness! I mean, I know what right click save as is. Anyway, okay. Anyways, what's the next thing. NFT bay. There's like 20 terabytes of it. It's it's interesting. We'll talk about that later. Also, I'm gonna jump to this just because this this I'm actually very happy this is happening, which might make me sound horrible, but. Uh, the fall of Activision slash Blizzard. Bobby Kotick is the worst of the bunch. I tried to go out on a bit of a limb a while ago and call it Bobby Kotick on Wancho because, like, I felt like no one else was, and now it's happening. And I feel I feel validated. It's good. It's good. He's finally he's finally taking the sword. Um, yeah, he's like a horrible person, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> And the show is brought to you by Exter, Squarespace, and Secret Lab. All right, there's a couple of merch messages that are amazing. I just need to get to these really quick. Uh, oh, wait, where, oh, where'd it go? Um, uh, 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 okay, this is great. How do I open the bicep pocket on the WAN hoodie while wearing it? Can you demo? All right, ready? There you go. <laughs> That's, that's okay. honestly how I've done it. There's too. actually a lot of feedback about how a lot of the pockets on the WAN hoodie V2 are kind of pointless. That's fair. We know, actually. <laughs> but if you find a point for it and someone sees you actually use it, it's super sick. So like, it, every time. It's just one of those things where we did it because the original one had a lot of pointless pockets too. And we were like, apparently people like that. So here we go, boys. <laughs> um, Do it again. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our first topic today. Of course, it's Apple's self-service repair program, or as we're calling it, ASSER program. <laughs> they announced it on Wednesday, and this is a really big deal because Apple has famously made, like, not just not just passively, not by accident. Apple has famously, intentionally made their devices more difficult to repair in recent years for end users, for non-authorized repair shops. I mean, they even refused to repair our Mac Pro, which there is a lot of confusion over what happened with that saga. Yeah. The number of people that have read incorrect reports of what happened and assumed that we were somehow looking for some kind of handout is yeah. mind-blowing. They wanted to pay for it. We, we broke it, and we said, hey, mea culpa, we want you to fix it. We will pay you. They refused. They would not do it. That is unacceptable for any company. That's ridiculous. Because you don't want, like, e-waste garbage in the world. Like, that, that's the, like, they wanted to pay for it. We were ready to pay for it. So um, at that time, Apple required a service ticket in order to order a part, penalizing or even blacklisting Apple authorized service providers who don't send the broken parts back to them. So what happened was not only would Apple not repair it for us, we couldn't get anyone else to do it for us because, and this was rectified later, they did eventually approve a replacement but the cost was ridiculous because to apple a motherboard is apparently the motherboard cpu ram which 
is stupid, yeah. uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we did eventually get that sorted out. We ended up doing it ourselves anyway because it wasn't cost effective. But they required a service ticket because once our uh, once our serial number was flagged in the system, nobody could order a board for us because they would have to send back our serial number. Like they'd have to send back the board, and then Apple would be like, "Uh, uh, no." Like like the amount of control that they exercise over this stuff is just unbelievable. So what this does is it keeps these broken parts off the gray market for independent repair and allows Apple's own repair service to enjoy an advantage in repair in part access over even their Apple authorized service providers. So the TLDR, Apple has fought independent repair at every turn for at least a decade. But this self-service repair program, or ASSER, is uh, going to support the iPhone 12 and 13 to begin with and will offer apparently, more than 200 individual parts and tools, including display assemblies, camera modules, batteries, and then, of course, the tools that are required to make the repairs. It will be only available in the United States to start in early 2022, but will expand to additional countries throughout 2022. Uh, support for additional repairs and M1 Max will come later in 2022. So, your thoughts. Uh, honestly, when I read this and I still kind of feel this way, yeah, I'm just waiting until I see it. Yeah. I think that's fair enough. Uh, I think I there's just, yeah. a, a hundred ways that Apple can make this not make any sense. Even yes. just pricing. Yeah. If the pricing doesn't make any sense because Apple forces you to buy, let's say, let's say not only the screen, but also all of the tools required, even if you already own them. There's also like right now we're in a chip shortage, right? So are they are they going to prioritize this? Right. So availability. So Will they even so have stock? It's, is it just going to be permanently out of stock and overpriced? Like I I don't know. Maybe it won't be. I, I'd love to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that's kind of where I'm sitting right now. I think this is very cool. I'm happy they're stepping in this direction at all because even if it's ineffective, maybe it get some more people to start embracing this type of stuff. But is Apple moving in this direction or are they just trying to appease? They've been pushed in this direction? Well, Either way, honestly, I don't care. As long as there's more right to repair stuff going on. It's been pointed out that Wednesday happened to be, this is probably a coincidence though, happened to be the deadline for Apple to take action on a pro repair shareholder resolution filed by environmental activists. Oh. Apple could have faced SEC enforcement had they not complied. <laughs> okay. And yeah, like I, I'm sure they didn't want to do this. That, that's the kind of vibe I've been yeah. getting this whole time. Um, the irony, or not irony, the, the hypocrisy of all of this is that Apple beats this drum. And I've been, I've been criticized uh, very recently. I was criticized for not pointing out HP's uh, excellent access to service manuals and parts, which I actually did do in a recent video, but that was not the only thing that particular critic got wrong about um, things that I have or haven't said. Um, I was, I was criticized for not pointing out HP's uh, excellent moves. And I've also been criticized for not pointing out that there are plenty of other companies that don't do any better of a job than Apple. They might not go as far uh, to prevent users from repairing their devices, but certainly don't go out of their way to help with it. Yeah. And the reason for that is that it's Apple's hypocrisy that makes them such a target for me. They keep talking about green, carbon neutral, environment, blah, blah, blah. They have an entire... They have an entire website, like like sub site, dedicated to how environmentally friendly they are, and they use it as a selling point for moves that are, frankly, blatantly, obviously, just about saving cost, like not including chargers with their phones. Yeah. Um, there happens to be an environmental benefit, which is great. I'll, a W is a W for sure. Yes, but don't pretend that that's why you did it because whenever it is inconvenient yeah. whenever it is not profitable even in some cases when it would be profitable for them to just make these parts accessible <laughs> apple actively fights against people repairing their own devices and especially small shops repairing apple devices without apple's blessing and that is environmentally devastating Throwing away, shredding working devices, even in some cases, working devices that still are getting software updates. Like we're not even talking stuff that would be a, a security risk to be on any network or anything like that. We're talking working 
actively supporting devices, supported devices, shredding those, there is absolutely no way to spin that into some kind of environmental positive. And the Apple apologists will say, well, um, actually, Linus, Apple recycles a lot of stuff. Good, good for them. That's good. I'm not going to criticize them for that. What I'm criticizing them for is resorting to the worst R when the first two R's were absolutely accessible yeah. in many cases. That's why I'm critical. <sighs> reduce, reuse. Reduce, reuse. But reduce. repair should probably be in there too. Reduce, Isn't that reuse, recycle. Reduce? Isn't repair and reduce kind of... Similar? Yeah, sure. Um, repairing is a means to reduction. Yes. So that is that is the first R, the best R. Um, so like the... So yeah, I don't know. I, 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 we'll, we'll see in the future. I suspect it's kind of a not entirely fully real move, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, Apple still has an opportunity here to completely blow us away. And, yes, and, and I would love that. That'd be great. Make a, the Very full, open to it. I, even if it wasn't the full, you know, transparency that we might want, that, that someone like a Rossman might want, right? Where yeah. Apple's providing literal schematics and part number ordering part numbers for every capacitor on the board, right? Like, even if they don't go that far, I'd say the vast majority of dead iPhones that you just want a quick and easy repair at your local shop in the mall or whatever are going to be your broken screens, your broken lightning connectors, right? Th those, like a button that doesn't work, as long as that basic stuff is covered, battery replacements, these are, batteries are consumables, even rechargeable batteries, they're consumables. Yeah. Um, as long as you've got all those major bases covered, I, I, I would consider this a win for consumers. Uh, obviously, Apple could take it a step farther and they could just, you know, uh, no, I don't think I would even ask for that. So I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not going to bring it up. I want to make sure that I'm being reasonable. OK, uh, now, speaking of Rossman, uh, Lewis Rossman did respond uh, with mild skepticism, especially after Apple's independent repair provider program in 2019 yeah. um, required independent repair shops to agree to replace entire assemblies, even if the faulty component itself should cost significantly less. He's like, been on this ride before. As little as $60 versus $300. So a keyboard issue, for example. Gee, were keyboard issues an a problem for Apple in 2019? <laughs> Was that, was that a common thing? Just, just a little bit, I think. I, I don't think just anyone... almost all of them, I think. I don't think anyone needed their keyboard replaced <laughs> on a MacBook in 2019. Nah. That doesn't ring a bell. Nah. Uh, so a keyboard issue would actually require the replacement of the entire upper chassis, including the trackpad, battery, speakers, microphones, and, of course, the, the shell itself. I mean, that's ridiculous. But in order to become one of these uh, repair providers... You had to agree to perform the repairs like that. And if you're found in violation, uh, there can be penalties. So that's not, that's not really providing options. That's just making the independent repair shop uncompetitive, right? Like forcing them to charge $300 for a $60 repair is not reasonable. Um, so Lewis called on Apple to sell individual parts and not make this a meme like the independent repair program. And... Uh, if Apple takes it seriously, has said he will swallow everything he said about them and move forward working together, no grudges. Nice. I believe that. I believe that. Um, I think that. I think that Lewis absolutely can get very angry about things, but I also think that he's a reasonable person who can get unangry as quickly as he gets angry, as long as you're doing it the way that he thinks it should be done, which by and large, he tends to be right about. I would also say that in a lot of cases when he is really angry about something, we need someone like him to be angry about it. And it's very helpful to have him <laughs> being angry about it. Maybe not fantastic for like mental health reasons and stuff, being constantly angry. Um, but like, I, we need someone fighting the fight. I think fight. he will live a shorter life on account of that. Um, yeah. And I, I hate that because, you know, love the guy. Great um, guy. But, but, but yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's very good to have someone fighting that fight. So, so someone asked um, if there could be digital gift cards on the LTT store. There are. Um, Maybe you need to work on the searchability on LTD Store a little bit. Well, there's um, physical gift cards, but are there digital ones? Oh, we mail people those gift cards? Oh, I actually don't know. Do we? I just assumed they would be digital because it's like... No, I think they're physical. Year. Wow. Uh, Sarah did up like graphics for the cards. Wow. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we'll make digital ones. 
<laughs> I'll talk to Nick. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah, all, right. all right. Um So the question the reason why they asked that, which is actually yeah. kind of interesting, is they're saying for for like Christmas presents yeah, Conrad said they're digital. So they're digital. Okay, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Yes, they're digital. Um so the, the reason why they asked that was because they can gift people in uh, they're all digital overseas countries okay. gift cards for christmas and stuff because a lot of these people like bundling their purchases Got because it. of shipment costs sure they are digital sorry cool. i was i was completely mistaken so sarah just the, did the graphics are great yeah they're they're, they're actually great. super cool and i like that there's individual ones for the the different values of gift card that you can buy and stuff but uh yeah. tom arnold made the intro where i come out of a box all right, let's move on to our next topic. I mean, I guess that's yeah. all there is to really say. Oh, actually, no, there is a discussion topic here that Anthony put in for us. <laughs> Would repairability make you more likely to purchase Apple products in the future? There's You personally. I mean, you've even considered going iPhone in the last, in the last calendar yeah, year. Yeah, I, I had to pause you've talked for a about second. It. Yeah. Um, it, I, I, don't, I don't know if it would make me buy them. But the question was technically more likely. Would it make you more it likely? It would m make me more likely to buy it. I still don't know if that would result in me buying it. But it, it I mean, it, it makes the, the situation a lot better. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to value repairability quite highly in, in future purchases right now. And there's a few phones on the market that look like they have considerable repairability. But the main one that I'm interested in is overseas only, Europe only, I believe. Right. Um, so that's a little unfortunate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but like that's kind of, that is a big solid point for me specifically right now. So I yeah, mean, it would make me more likely. Apple already does a great job on sustainability from a software perspective. They yeah. support their hardware longer than almost it, than anyone else. There's very old iPhones in still, the mobile phone still space. Still kicking it. Yeah. yeah. The, the iPhone SE is still getting software updates. Yeah. So all very they have cool. to do is, do the hardware too. And then, yeah, that would make me more likely. But it would also have to be part of an overall attitude shift towards um, not assuming how I want to do things, right? Um, yeah. I can quickly find phone apps, by the way, because I have like a template for my folders and I just use muscle memory. I know exactly where everything is and I've been using exactly the same layout for many years. Um, apparently one of... Uh, one of our viewers, their favorite WAN show is the one from Japan. Man, it has been a long time. That since was we've... a heck of a show. <laughs> that was something else. Oh man, yeah, that was amazing. I, the uh, the camera setup for that will be something that I will never forget in my whole life. I am going. Oh, just the fact that Edsel passed out drunk and like... we all forgot we were supposed to do WAN. Yeah. So like I yeah so he was like not able to really not functional stay upright but he got the camera going yeah and like sort of monitored it and everything it was like it was actually pretty impressive considering the degree of inebriation yeah, yeah. um yeah so that's pretty cool <laughs> i can keep watching the forum i'm finally traveling again I yeah. am going on my first trip in, I mean, technically, I guess I went down to Seattle to to visit Valve to check out the early Steam Deck. Uh, um, man, they keep kind of emailing me. I was like, keep me in the loop, keep me in the loop. And they're doing that. And every time I see an email from my Valve rep, I'm like, is this the one? Is this the one where I'm getting my unit and I can start to make videos about it? Because I have so many questions to answer still. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. Uh, did you see in their developer event that they um, they formalized? Because I think this was either rumored or expected at some point. But they formalized that SteamOS 3.0 is going to be a standalone Linux distro. Oh, so you can just... Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pretty I've cool. actually been wondering about that. That's pretty interesting. All the benefits. That's genuinely pretty interesting. The literal millions of dollars that Valve will have put into game compatibility in Linux. Like Is that we, episode six? I think we jumped the gun. Yeah. I think we jumped the gun on the Linux gaming challenge because SteamOS 3.0 could potentially well, just... Know. Well, I, I still think it was valuable for yes. us to see where we started. Before. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But once it happens... I mean, there's the potential that we could kind of go, okay, let's Linux challenge again. I'd try it again. I would, I'll try it again in a bit. My kids were pretty stoked. Well, now that I don't Minecraft necessarily know can happen. if we need to like cold turkey it again. I, for me, because I'm so convenience oriented, like I talked about this in some of the other I parts. I have more free time. 
in other in other parts like when i have 45 minutes to sit in game i need less than two minutes of it to be launching the game we haven't yeah we haven't played anno or forged alliance (laughs) for like a month and a half i actually kind of cheated on you um the night that you messaged me about playing subcom I didn't get your message because I was like vibing playing Anno for like three hours. Oh, that's actually pretty chill. That's yeah, right. I was uh, I was definitely I was definitely <laughs> just I couldn't sleep and I was I I, I was like oh thank goodness I have because honestly that's one of the things that I'll do is when I'm tired but not sleepy I'll sit and I'll play a game that. Um, Anno's not, not what I have been going for because Anno was a bit of a problem for me for a bit where I'd sit down to play for an hour and I <laughs> and would emerge just, time's just gone. six hours yeah, later. The game yeah. even tells you every two hours. It'll be like, hey, um, you should probably get up and stretch your legs or get a cup of coffee. In a while, yeah. yeah. Um, so it wasn't Anno for a bit. Um, so not having Cave Story because that's what I was actually playing mm, late at night. Yeah. Um, not having my save game when I started the Linux challenge is really, really, really frustrating for me. <laughs> but uh, that's something that I'll do when I'm tired but not sleepy. So I was, I couldn't sleep. So I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna let myself get tired. So I like fixed a couple of supply chain issues, and then I was able to go to bed and I was able to sleep. Um, I forget where I was going with this story. But yes, I cheated on you. I'm okay, sorry. That's all right. Uh, it's it's good to be back on Windows for yeah. a bit. I would like to just, I'd like to just stay on Windows for a little I bit. I've like almost exclusively been playing games that <laughs> don't work on Linux. Yeah. <laughs> just to like, oh, okay, I'm back. Um, what was I going to say? But yeah, I in some capacity, I would genuinely really like to try it. Yeah. And like, even if we weren't doing an official challenge, I would probably format format that drive and give it a shot. Um. It's very interesting. I'm stoked. So, man, once it comes, there's there's so many questions for me to answer. I'm I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of people who are excited, Nick's been standing here going like this, like wanting to wanting to talk to y'all. They won't be able to hear you on these mics because they're super. We don't have physical gift cards. All right, all right, here. All oh, right, no, I know about the physical gift yeah, cards. Yeah. We dealt with yeah. it. Okay. Jeez, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> Everyone's riding me here. Well, I don't know physical <laughs> gift cards. Con- Conrad knew and told us like right away. Okay. Yeah. Also, the search is fine for gift cards. Okay. All right. It's it's the filters is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Um, I would recommend uh, machine washing cold and then uh, laying it out to dry for the desk pad desk pad cleaning. There you go. All right. Why don't we move on to our next topic here, the Streamlabs controversy. Yeah. So. I have to confess that even as someone who sort of pays attention to the streaming and technology space, I assumed, which I see now I shouldn't have, I assumed that Streamlabs OBS, as it used to be called, was somehow associated with OBS. I knew that Streamlabs OBS is like junk and you shouldn't use it, so I'd never really... um, I'd never really gotten into or not junk. What I what I had heard about it was that it's more basic. Like it's supposed to be streamlined as opposed to fully featured. So for my part, I was like, well, I think I can figure out how to use OBS. So I'm not going to use the Streamlabs OBS, but I could see how there's a value to something like this existing. Sure. But right. I thought that they were just kind of like different streams of somehow associated projects, but that's that's not what it was. No. So what what is the deal here? Uh, I they're they're essentially just trying to own the entire software space for for streaming. Um as, as far as my understanding goes. They've been trying to do this for a long time. Uh I have been frustrated with St- Stream Labs for a considerable amount of time because they I don't remember because it's been genuinely a very long time. Yeah. But there was a service that I used to use that disappeared. And I don't know if they disappeared because they're like, ah, not enough people are using us now because of Streamlabs, or if it's because they got like bought out or copied or or what happened. But I know they disappeared, and I was frustrated because I didn't like the way that Streamlabs worked. Right. And I wanted to be able to use my old thing still, and there was some issue with that. But it's it's genuinely been like six years or something, so I don't remember the details, and I don't want to claim anything because it could be wrong. Um, but yeah, and then there's then there's Streamlabs OBS, which I have exclusively called slobs because i don't like Streamlabs and i find slobs to be really funny um okay fair enough (laughs) 
Uh, and then now this is coming out. And yeah, it's it's annoying. And a lot of their business practices for a long time have been very frustrating. Um, it's it's not just OBS. It's, it's a, a slew of other companies. Lightstream had a really, really interesting comparison that they showed where one of Lightstream's like front page where they show off um, their features and stuff is is practically you probably have to click on the image for people to be able to see it but it's practically identical to the page that Streamlabs put up including the reviews right which is just like what Streamlabs said that apparently that was uh, a test page for internal use that was not meant to be published which is still like dude you shouldn't just copy paste things including reviews for like an internal test site, just make your own oh, thing. Just use Laura Mipsum like everybody else. Yeah, like, come on. Layers I, on your overlays automatically whenever you go live. Layers on your overlay. Wow. It's like word for word. There's That's a few things you can find. Like there's a, there's a few ways that they say something that is exactly different every time throughout the whole web page and stuff. Like, But it's it's quite egregious. It's, it's gross. I don't know. Bad, not cool business practices. Um copying stealing overwriting stuff like that so with streamlabs obs one of the problems that i I don't think ended up showing up in here yeah is by having obs in their name and then buying advertising space for the keyword of obs right for searching in google uh when people would search for obs let's see if it happens now after the controversy no it doesn't uh but for a long time or in the past or whatever however you want to say it um if you search OBS it would come up with Streamlabs OBS right um which is kind of bleh. so i mean apparently i'm not the only one that was confused and thought there was some kind of association between the projects but that was like kind of the whole problem yeah yeah the... and i mean streamlabs uh, OBS is open source yeah. so like so technically someone else can utilize that code they base can utilize the code base the name is a little the name is pretty freaking iffy yeah so the controversy led obs developers to share their own woes uh when streamlabs was developing they were approached or uh, they were approached about uh, by streamlabs about the use of obs in their name obs declined but streamlabs went ahead and not only used the name but filed a trademark too very cool which is a, a super dick move as yes. it's as it's called in the industry <laughs> uh prominent streamers like hasanabi and pokimane spoke out saying that they would no longer use or be affiliated with streamlabs if they didn't resolve the issue why are they, why do they use streamlabs aren't they like professional streamers no streamlabs like is like a lot of people use it genuinely. they do yeah why i don't I, I believe the alerts and stuff, the integrations of those things are like easier or something. I hate oh, it. I don't okay. know. I hate it because I'm not used to it, to be fair. Right. Okay. Um, but, Can, I mean, yeah. float plane chat, like, is there a reason to use Streamlabs? If you're a new streamer, every, like, no, okay, not everyone. I bet you Epos is watching and he's like, I don't. And I'm the, I'm the streaming technician guy um but there's a lot of people online that will recommend you just go to Streamlabs because i believe it's kind of a one-stop shop it gets everything going blah 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 right okay yeah um, it's convenience yeah. i mean i guess for for my part like a lot of the time i will just i mean i went manjaro right like a lot of the time i'll just be like <laughs> we well, also we already used this and we don't use a lot of the alerts that normal streamers use oh i guess that's fair like we made our own merch thing right which like wouldn't work with it anyways right okay so uh, okay. i mean no it works with slobs I, I just don't think it would work with the Streamlabs alerts system. i just mean my general philosophy is if i'm gonna have to learn the hard one eventually anyway you just go i might it. as well just do it now just like it's kind of right you know how yeah. you know it's like learning physics right where every year you find out that everything you learned that last year was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You like, yeah. 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 I could go into a few stories about that, but yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> like what's the point, right? I might as well just go hard mode well, now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, you're learning how to learn, but yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, so, so, okay. Yeah, fine. I guess uh, professional streamers use Streamlabs OBS. Uh, now the discussion point here is I wonder how NCIX felt when you stole the tech tips that's I not... stole nothing. Yeah. I stole nothing. Calling it Linus Tech Tips was actually the CEO of NCIX's idea. And I bought the Linus Tech Tips channel and trademark and domain. Okay? I paid a fair price of $1. 
Canadian. <laughs> it's a Cana- <laughs> Canadian dollar. <laughs> it's an extremely expensive channel. Um, now, this is interesting. This is an interesting talking point. Streamlabs OBS has been out for almost three years now. Is OBS in the right for airing their dirty laundry now? Well, apparently behind the scenes, they've been doing so for quite a long time. Uh, they, they did say no to, to using the name initially. Um, <laughs> and, and, and this happens a lot in, in modern society, actually, where there will be grievances kind of with quite a few people. And then one group or one person yeah. will stand up very loudly and then all the other voices will join them. Right. Uh, so, I, I mean, it's it's fairly standard at this point. So apparently it's been ongoing. Epos Fox has a good video on the subject, so you guys can go go check that out. Check out... Uh, I'm stunned that Epos Fox has a video on a streaming subject. Really? I'm absolutely stunned. Yeah. Can't um, believe it. Thank you for that, Luke. <laughs> In other news, we've got some sponsors, hey. which is also pretty stunning. Uh, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Ah, uh, yes. The show is brought to you by Exter. Hey, Exter is a new sponsor. Exter Smart Wallets are high-end trackable wallets that are crafted to keep your valuables safe, slim, stylish, and findable. That's not an S. Whatever. I tried. Uh, their premium leather is sourced from gold-rated tanneries, and their quick card mechanism gives you easy access to every card you need. It features RFID protection, so your money, cards, and identity are kept safe and secure. And extra wallets are trackable worldwide through a solar-powered GPS tracker insert. So if you lost your wallet, you can use their app, or you can call through most virtual assistants to help you find it, hmm. which is but actually, really cool. Uh, you can save up to 40% off of Exter's, uh, or on Exter's Black Friday sale with code WANSHOW at shop.exter.com slash WANSHOW. So you guys can go check them out. Brand new sponsor. Thanks, Exter. Interesting. The show is also brought to you by a slightly less brand new sponsor, Squarespace. That's a classic. Squarespace gives you the tools you need to build and grow your online presence. They've got tons of templates spanning a large variety of categories. So whether you need a website for your blog or your wedding or your business, Squarespace has got you covered. You can get a domain quickly and easily through Squarespace if you need one, or you can port over an existing domain you already own. And you can get started with a free 14-day trial and just try it out. You'll be amazed by how easy it is to use. And if you're not amazed, you can contact their support live via chat and email. So head to squarespace.com forward slash when to get 10% off your first purchase. The show is also brought to you by Secret Lab. Thank you, Secret Lab, for sponsoring the WAN show and sponsoring my butt. That's right. I'm sitting on a Secret Lab chair right now. <laughs> Uh, they're engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work or play, and their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support complete with magnetic memory foam head pillow and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Nappa leather. They've got up to a five-year extended warranty and 49-day return policy, so you're covered if anything goes wrong, and you can head to the link in the video description to check out Secret Lab today. Now, what do you want to talk about next? Should we talk about this? Yeah, what? Yeah, what is this? Well, I would like you to guess. Uh, it would please me if you would guess what it is. It's not very heavy. My first, is, is it a phone? No, it is not a phone. It's not a phone. My first guess was that it was like some weird sandal thing or something. No, it's not but a I sandal thing. I think that's thing. incorrect. Can I cheat it all? Can I like read the back? Sure. What's this? Go ahead. That doesn't help, I think, almost at all. Earphones? Headphones? Or earbuds? <laughs> like earbuds. What? Made in 2019. Why do you have these? So, um, I yeah. only recently became aware of these. Louis Vuitton apparently has a true wireless earphone line. Um, that appears to be their own product as opposed to just really? silk screening That's their logo. That's genuinely really surprising. Onto something else. Well, I mean, it could be very, very OEM'd and just yeah. you know, branded. Because uh, I, th- I thought it was going to be like, you know, the like designed by McLaren phone. No. No, this is, this is actually their okay. own All product. Right. And I was naturally very curious to know what could possibly... What could possibly justify fifteen hundred dollars oh, no. for wireless earphones? 
Wow. What could possibly justify it? <laughs> they don't even look good. Well, that's subjective. That's fair. I mean, they might look good to people who care more about the logo than the actual industrial design. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, guys, uh, I'm really looking forward to reviewing these. I'm actually planning to work on my review. I'm going to be stuck on a plane for 20 hours. So I'll have plenty of time to run through the battery and make yeah. sure that it's actually, you know, yeah. as long as they say it is and uh, listen so to them. Is that is that unopened? Yeah. Dang. Do you want me to open it? Kind of. Are you going to do a short circuit? Should we open it? No, I'm not going to do a short circuit. I'm planning a full LTT review. Yeah, so. then let's do it. Okay. All right. You guys want you got, want a live unboxing of the I'm Louis sure they Vuitton? Do. Yeah. Well, I mean, first we're going to have to we're going to have to experience other aspects oh. of the of like of the, the unboxing. paper falling out. Of yeah. The hold envelope. on a second. There's a. I thought there was a little. Uh oh. I might have actually misplaced part of the part of the experience. Drama. Oh, tension. Shoot. Yeah. There's a little. There's a little envelope that it came with, and I honestly have no idea what was in it. No, no, it's not this. No. It's not this. It was a little sealed envelope. I'm going to have to run over to 105 and uh, see if I can find that. So uh, thank you for shopping with Louis Vuitton. Your product has been crafted by experienced artisans with wow. exclusive materials. Oh, my. Then packed with the utmost care, following oh, strict gosh. sanitary guidelines. Blah, 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 blah. Nous vous remercions d'avoir choisi Louis Vuitton. Okay, so there's that in French. Uh, exchanges AJ is and returns. judging you so hard right now. Whatever, AJ. Every word. What is this? Uh, oh, this is my packing slip. Oh, no, it's a gift receipt. Okay. All right. Live unboxing. Louis Vuitton earphones. I actually don't know if that's exactly the model that we got. They apparently have a bunch of them. Uh, oh. What is this? There's a thing here. Oh, hold on. There's a thing in here, I think. Does this not? What is this? But there's nothing there's nothing in here. It looked like there was something in there. Okay. Here we go. Actually it's fun. Oh, okay. Oh. It opens like that. Okay. Oh, look at that. The presentation. Presentation though. Starts pretty strong. Okay. Eco friendly packaging for the most part. Cloth is actually terrible from an uh eco perspective. Uh especially if it's single use. But my my kids will get plenty of use out of these cute little baggies. Yeah. Uh, we've got some replacement ear tips. So I have extra small. This The presentation falls apart a little bit here. This is just standard plastic printed bags with little ear tips in them. Extra yep. small, large, small for whatever has a different color of printing on it. Maybe they sourced those from a different factory or something. Oh, that's weird. I have, wait, what? I have two smalls. Wait, what is SM? Maybe SM is not small. Why are they both labeled SM? Okay, I'm definitely going to talk about that in the video. They didn't look the same size to me. One of them, no, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. One of them seems to be like a wrap for it to yeah. help hold it in your ear or something. Yeah. Okay, so I got that. And then what's in the other one? I have no idea if people are even interested in this. You know, they, what's the... They seem like they What's might the be. unboxing experience like of a $1,500 pair From of earbuds? From really far away. Okay, in the other bag, the extra large ear tips are in there for some <laughs> reason. Um, I don't know Sweet. why that would be. There's a USB A to C adapter and then a C to C charging cable that, that actually has wrap. a leather. Wow. Okay. I don't know if it's real leather. Uh, hard to say. Is it attached to the cable or does it just fall away? It is attached to the cable. Oh. So you've got a nice little leather. I, I personally love it when my cable ties are bulkier than they have to be. Um, <laughs> that's I'm a big fan of that. And obviously, we're going to test the LV cable with our cable ah, tester. Ah, nice. Okay. Obviously. There we go. So there we got we our go. charging cable. All right. This feels reassuring. Hold it. Whoa. It's heavy, right? How much of that is this container, though? Oh, almost all of it, I would hope. I mean, I is don't... this a charging? Does this charge? I have no idea. Hold on, there's more. There's some more of that stuff in here. Some might be the battery. It it has some like you guys aren't going to be able to hear it or anything, but it it has some weight in it for sure. Uh, there's a little. It's got some weight to it. Does anyone understand that? Little reference? envelope with a cleaning cloth. Oh, I can't open it. Cleaning cloth. I mean, that's like a that's like a hundred and whatever dollar value. How much does Apple charge for their cleaning cloth? Is it fifteen bucks? I don't remember. It, I, don't know. I, I I hold on. How much? Uh, how much is Apple's cleaning cloth? I thought it was like ludicrously expensive or something. Oh no, it's like 25 Canadian. Okay. 
Uh, 19 US. Sorry, I, I, I must have added a zero to the, to the stupid price tag. Okay, then we've got a manual. All right, cool. And uh, this is it. This is the moment, Luke. I can't believe how freaking heavy it's this thing heavy. is. It's heavy. I feel like there's battery in there. I think that's a charging case, which nice is actually kind of cool. Nice quality, we'll nice quality zipper. Okay. Oh, no, this is just a case for the case. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Oh. Packaging made in China. Of course it is. Mm. Um, so what am I going to do with this? I mean, again, my girls would, would love this. Can you remove the lid of that case while it's in the blue one? Uh, that's a good question. So, oh, okay. So it's like a, a case for your case so yeah. that you can case while you case. Uh, they didn't really apparently think of that. No, it, um, it kind of lifts no. it out a yeah, bit. Yeah, that's a bad experience. That's not the greatest. Um, so this is like honestly sort of almost a... Completely pointless. Yeah. And then they have a window on their charging case, which is pretty bulky, unless you also own a purse, which I'm sure they'd be happy to sell you. Um, at a pretty good profit margin. Oh yeah, um, definitely. You're not going to be carrying this around with you easily. It's pretty pretty bulky. Uh, here are the earphones uh, themselves. The window looks kind of nice. Yeah, the window's kind of kind of classy actually. It's, it appears to be glass. Oh, not like uh, plastic. All right. And um, the magnet or the hinge or something on that movement seems pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, feels pretty good. Feels okay. pretty good. Okay. And then. Uh, this is the first time I have ever paid for a Louis Vuitton anything. I promise you that. So this is my this is my okay. first. Okay. I'm a Louis Vuitton virgin. Here we go. How do I look? Yeah, I don't think that looks cool or good at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like I don't know. I'm not exactly uh uh you know fashionista or anything, but wow, not into it. All right. Well, it does look different. All it cost me was fifteen hundred. It would make you stand out, which stand out. I believe is a big part of the point. <laughs> I believe is a big part of the point. Hearing so. hearing me and Luke talk about like <laughs> the point of luxury goods is probably not an experience anyone was hoping for or needed on the land show today. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, there's going to be a full video of it. I'm going to be <laughs> evaluating them from a from a performance perspective and you guys know how much, you know, I care about the additional you know, little leather, leather blue pouch that case. it comes with or whatever. Yeah. I expect them to sound 10 times better than AirPods Pros. They have to. Or eight times or whatever, whatever the math works out to be. Seven times? I, I don't know. Unless that really weird red box on your f head is, uh, <laughs> is, is worth the additional cost. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe it is. I don't know. Not for me. All right. Um, so I, I, have not, I have not looked into these very much. Some people are, some people are sort of really, uh, c really concerned about the amount of money I spent on them. Okay, so guys, first of all, I'm gonna make a video about it. So this is an investment. Second of all, I'm going to sell these and hopefully I can find someone almost as stupid as me to pay almost as much as I did and then it's all good. Yeah, nice. right. Yeah. Should be no problem. There's like probably better ear tips you can get anyways. <laughs> Jia so. Jang Mian says, so no LV sponsor for Linus? Yeah, I don't think that that was ever a possibility. I mean, yeah. when it comes to luxury brands, they want nothing to do with tech bros <laughs> like me because we do not give two hoots about the like cool font that you use to print your name on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it better have a performance story. I mean, that's one of the things that I talk to the merch team for us about a lot is like, what is, what is the point? What is the point of anything we're doing? And sometimes the point can be memes. LOL banana. No problem. Yeah. But there has to be some kind of point. Absolutely. Rod, Rod Rosenberg's in chat. Oh, stop, Rod. And Rod said, <laughs> I thought this was pretty funny. Luke has a hard time spending money on stuff at Princess Auto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. To be clear, I have no problem spending money, but I don't like wasting it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I actually posted on Twitter recently. I decided to I decided to influence her flex for a change because it's not really something that I do that often. Like usually anytime we're doing anything, even the gold Xbox controller, 
had to have an ROI pitch internally. Like we don't just do stuff for to lulls. And while we didn't end up being able to sell it, the absolute worst case scenario for it is we melt it down and we still own a gigantic chunk of gold, which last I checked is still doing pretty okay. Not bad. So like, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but I decided to influencer flex and post that I bought a gym. There have been some super chats asking about the gym. So the deal with the gym is that real estate in Vancouver is has been a pretty good investment. It's happening. Um, particularly industrial. Um, it's something that I have not only wanted for a really long time, but it's something that I have had. I mean, I'm not going to use the N word. Uh, I have don't need it. Um, mm. But I have had a really difficult time getting my girls started on badminton because there hasn't been anywhere to play due to all the restrictions on gym spaces, particularly municipally managed ones that have made it pretty much impossible to just go in and occupy space and not be using court time efficiently. Um, I really want to get them started. They're already, you know, two years behind when I started my son. And the last thing I want is for my daughters to be like, hey, we couldn't help noticing that, you know, yeah. when it comes to trying to do this particular father kid activity, you really gave our brother all the attention. Like that is not, that is not the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to get them started on that. It's also, I think, uh, it has the potential to be a really cool employee benefit. So it's something that we we bought as a thing that everyone who works at Linus Media Group, Floatplane, and Creator Warehouse can use. It's only about six minutes from our office, which is pretty cool, I think. And we're not going to just have a badminton court in there. So the idea is to have uh, badminton, we'll have badminton lines on the floor and we'll have a net that can kind of be shoved over to the side. And I want to have all kinds of stuff there. So there's a little bit of space kind of at the front of the unit, out, out of the way of the court where we could have, you know, I don't know, rowing machine, bicycles, some weights, stuff like that. Um, I'd love to have just like, you know, some balls, like play some, play some, have some nets, play some indoor soccer, yeah. you know, uh, slap around some, some, some ball hockey balls. What's a ball hockey ball called hockey ball. I don't think you call it a hockey ball. It's just a ball. Sure. But, it, but it's a hockey ball, the orange one. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, slap around some hockey balls, put some basketball nets up. Like if people want to just go chill. Yeah. I think people just call it, I'm trying to th remember now. I think people just call it ball. I don't think it has like. I think it's a ball hockey ball. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I could That's be probably wrong. more specifically like what it is, but I don't think I ever heard anyone call it anything else. If you went to like Sports Check to buy one, it's, yeah, it's probably called. Ball so AJ ball. is apparently salty that he can't use the gym. Uh, AJ, I have offered to pay your moving expenses yeah. many times for a lot of years, so I don't even want to hear about it. Yeah, AJ. AJ, you have you have a, a at one point in time there was almost a. Uh, ice cream delivery robot in the mix. I don't even remember if, know if you remember that. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, we were, I th it was mostly a meme, but we were trying to we were trying to get AJ to move over, <gasps> and he wanted like incentives, and I was asking like, what do you actually want? Uh, and he couldn't come up with anything, so he ended up coming up with like a robot that would deliver him ice cream while he was working, and I was like, okay, but I was joking. Uh, yes, because I'm not doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on. NFT Bay. Sure, let's talk NFT Bay. Yeah. Um, um, kind of funny. It's an art project. It's I, I believe it does actually work, um, but I don't I don't necessarily expect it to like stay around forever or anything. Uh, there's over 20 terabytes of NFTs that have been right-click saved from the Ethereum and Solana blockchains. Uh, the website gives you free access to as many crypto punks and lazy lions as you could ever want and everything else um i i i believe it he he says somewhere that it's like trying to bring to light um like what what nfts actually are and how a lot of the images associated with nfts are, are hosted on like web 2 style uh storage spaces without guaranteed longevity of storage mm -hmm. so the actual reference might 404 eventually and and some other weird stuff like that um but that's that's honestly about it. It's interesting in an artistic sense and in a tech sense and in a few other different ways, but there isn't really a ton to say about it. And we probably can't put it up on screen because there are some lewd NFTs <laughs> and we don't know necessarily what's going to show up if we load the page. Um, yeah. And do know that 
before you go to the website if you are planning on going there as well. Um, someone said only about 10 gigabytes. Well, rip the notes. Uh, but there's there's a an amount. I don't know. You know what? I'm feeling lucky. You're going for it? There's an I'm feeling lucky. Sir. Oh, okay. Pirate NFT search. I mean, I, I don't know. Picture? If I just search for picture, I'm feeling lucky. What's the first picture I'm going to get? Okay. I didn't get anything too incriminating. So here's some pirate NFTs. We've got a pirate Pikachu, uh, whatever this is. It's a picture. Yep. The The whole point of the stuff isn't isn't the actual picture. An argument that is brought up often is um, you can go to the, the Louvre and take a picture of Mona Lisa. It doesn't mean you own the Mona Lisa, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah. Um, oh, that is unfortunate. Okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> was there something bad? I mean, I don't know if I would describe it as bad. It was pretty tasteful. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Here, you can have a look at it if you want. That's uh, fine. It's on my screen. I'll see it later. I... It's, uh, <laughs> oh, my. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's unique. Yeah. <laughs> so there's Did that. Did it? Yeah. Because well, it's a... Uh, yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, cool. See? Nice. Uh, but yeah, um, it's interesting. It's, if, you're, if you're into... If you've been paying attention to you know, NFT kind of stuff. It's it's an interesting development. Kay. I find it interesting that the dude's name is very notably attached to it. Yeah. Like he has an FAQ on his on his GitHub and he's like he's a person who's been around. Um like it's this is not his first rodeo. Um so yeah, that that I find very surprising. Um and we'll see where that goes. But that's about it. Okay. Cool. In um, other fun, exciting, amazing news, um, I don't know which one to go with. Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite. It's back. Yes. Halo's, Halo's back, baby. Have you played? So cool. Yeah. Not a like it? huge amount, but I have played, and it's fun. The my the main two things that I'm excited about aren't out yet, but what's really exciting right now is the foundation is absolutely there. The game feels great. It yep. looks great. One thing that was just deeply refreshing for me personally. Um, I don't know why I care so much about this. And this hasn't been a thing for a long time. I think I've just been so frustrated by modern, very, very modern last few years UIs. Yeah. That the UI, the you load up the game and it's just immediately beautiful. Right. Like there, there's been so many games where like... You start out in some basement and like... I don't even mean that. I mean, you launch the game, you haven't clicked anything yet. Oh, and it's I see. Stunning. Right. Like the backdrop is is absolutely fantastic. All the UI elements, the GUI, beautiful. I know Jaden had some feedback about not being able to find things super well. I didn't really care. I just immediately went into a match because I don't really care about customizing my Spartan too much. Sorry if, if for the three, four, three people that worked on that. I'm just whatever. I'm yeah. sure it's great. Um, but yeah, it, it, it feels really good. The gunplay and stuff is really good. Um, I, I found some feedback from certain people online that I think haven't played Halo in a long time. Yeah. Uh, to be kind of funny, they're like, wow, the time to kill is really long. And I'm like, Halo. Halo. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Um, that, yeah. better, better put a full magazine of needlers, needles into yeah. the, your opponent. Yeah. The, yeah. the whole idea is supposed to be that it's kind of hard to take a Spartan down. You're fighting other Spartans. So yeah. it's pretty hard to take a Spartan down. Um, I, I think a lot of other people have also forgotten that in Halo, the, the shields and the health are actually two very different things. Yeah. And like, if you remember, I think. I played a lot of Halo 2 personally. That was my main Halo game. Um, and I know in Halo 2 especially, the plasma pistol battle rifle combo was like kingly. Because if you had a fully charged plasma pistol and you could hit someone with it, their shields are gone. Yeah. And then you could triple shot BR to the head and it's just over. And there isn't exactly, it doesn't really feel like there's exactly that combination right, right. now. Um, but you do need to mix up the weapons. If you use like covenant weapons, they're better at taking down the shields and you use human weapons that are better at taking down the HP, whatever. I don't know. It feels really, really good. There's been some complaints out there that the battle pass progression is like not great or something. Again, this is something I really don't care about because right. it's cosmetic items and I'm, I just, I'm just trying to shoot some stuff. Um, but Microsoft has already responded. They've already been working on it. Um, they've, they've given like apology rewards. They did a really, wow. really quick stopgap cool. solution of making it so that there was a challenge of just play a game that yeah. you could just do repeatedly over and over and over again for points. 
Right. Okay. Um, so that there was like you could progress a little bit easier right away, and then they're working on a more long term solution, and they've they've given some reward for people for dealing with it, which is great. It's free to play, which has its positives and negatives. Sure. Any every the positive is that it's free. The negatives are everything else. Yeah. Pretty much every modern game, even like Forza, like a racing game has like rampant cheating in it. Like cheating in the modern era is insane and it's, it's worst in the FPS space. Um, so having it free to play makes that even easier, but it also massively increases the player base, which is very good for a multiplayer game. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the two features that I am most excited for are both not in the game right now, which is co-op and forge. A, a lot of my favorite experiences in Halo are not playing the game in just like a quick match format. Yeah. So for, I'm really excited about Forge. Yeah. And then uh, the, another massive amount of what I like Halo for is co-op campaign. <laughs> That's also not in the game yet. Yeah. Um, I'll, bu- I'll, I'll, I'll load it up. I'll download it once co-op's available because realistically, yeah. I'm not going to play a competitive shooter these days. I'm not. I've, I was never very good. And I'm especially not very good the older I get. So there, I just don't get a lot of enjoyment out of walking around on the map for four seconds, getting headshot from someone I can't even see. By some dude who's memorized all the locations of all the sniper yeah. spawns and whatever else. Yeah. I'm definitely more excited for the other modes. Like I don't have, I, <clears throat> like as long as it's not shroud or something, which I've literally tried to do, you know, I am, I am pretty comfortable just, you know, trying to shoot a guy who's trying to shoot me at the same time. But for me, I don't have the time at this stage in my life to, like you said, memorize all the routes that someone might take and do all that research, right? Like watching YouTube videos where people are doing this kind of hardcore analysis. Okay, at the moment of spawn, you need to basically start counting four and a half seconds. And if you can get to this point before that, they can't hit you. So you can get set up so you can just slide down this thing and get in position. And if they've gone this way, you'll probably be able to get like three free kills. It's like, I, I don't, I, I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I can't. Yeah, that's like all, all my favorite stuff in Halo is just playing with friends. No, not online matchmaking, personally. Yeah. Like, like Blood Gulch with some buddies. And you're even good around. at video games. So that's like... A very You're different. Good at video games too. Get over it. Um, what, what was I? What was I trying to say? There's. A, oh yeah, this is an interesting topic. Y'all have been watching me for years. Yeah, you did. And okay, you can't even say that because you did that challenge. What challenge? For people to come play you in video games, and you just trashed. Yeah, on but like those were like everyone. nobodies. No offense. You're <laughs> lovely people. <laughs> That's the audience, man. I know, and they're wonderful, and I love them. <laughs> and you beat them. Well. Yeah, but they, like, they, they weren't. I'm not saying you're shroud. No, you're not. But I don't think you're Nobody bad. Nobody is. I, yeah. I, well, it's not that I'm good. It's that they Conrad were says really I would destroy bad. Linus one v one in any game. I don't know if that's true. I think it might be a lot of games because Conrad's one one heck of a yeah. Any game, gamer I think, boy. is probably a bit of a stretch. Conrad, yeah. you wanna you wanna put lunch on that? Because I'm pretty sure I can find a game that I can absolutely shit wreck you at. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. Uh, he's probably going to take that. Um, what was I going to say? He's going to buy me lunch is what he's going to do. <laughs> um, man, I had some... T- oh, right. This is an interesting topic and one that I've been somewhat bottling, but with the release of Halo Infinite, I just can't do it anymore because I didn't want people to jump on this negatively because of the Linux challenge. Yeah. But... This has been a bit of an interesting year with gaming. There's been a lot. There's been some good releases. There has been. There's been a lot of really subpar releases. A lot of people have been pointing and saying, like, this is kind of the releases that are coming from COVID. It makes sense. There was a lot of disruption in studios, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, okay, okay, okay. There's been quite a few not what we were hoping for games. Microsoft, out of freaking nowhere, drops three bangers at the end of the year. Right. Age of Empires 4, yep. Forza Horizon 5, Halo Infinite. Each one of them, the communities are very happy with it. That's yep. the thing that matters the most to me. I believe they're all like selling well as well, but the communities are happy with all of those. And like the chance that you were going to piss off the Age of Empires community with a bad release was really Extremely high. Extremely high. It's been really so high. long and the games are so beloved. And that's also true for Halo. Yep. 
<laughs> that's a Mind le- you, that's that less community, true with Horizon, I think the but... expectations were lower for Halo. <laughs> that's probably fair. I mean, yeah. Age of Empires 3 was a solid entry in that series. Yes. The and quality has been a little down The for quality of AoE had not really plummeted, you know? Yeah. So that I think no, I think Age of Empires and Forza were much higher risk than Halo. But Halo is obviously going to be the bigger mover in terms of mm. it being a more popular gaming genre in general. Yeah. So the fact that they got them all right is extremely impressive. Maybe just buying every game studio is a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know Bethesda had nothing to do with any of them. Or any yeah. Of that, yeah. But. I, I, and I think. Like so, something else that I want to give them praise for as well, which I, I don't think it was in the notes here, but it was in my my tweet feed, was the stability of that launch. Right. It it was like a, a what do you call it, a surprise launch as far as my understanding goes. They just kind of dropped it out of nowhere. But I also believe there was like a mass. I think peak concurrence were like two fifty three hundred k on the first day or something. Um, it's peak concurrent. It's not total amount of players, to be clear. And as far as my understanding goes, their multiplayer was completely fine the whole time. And you contrast that with the owners of AWS launching New World and just completely yeah, how failing everywhere. It's I don't know. It's it's really it's quite impressive to see Microsoft Game Studios kind of come out of nowhere because I don't. Someone might be able to correct me here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I haven't been paying enough attention. But for the last while, I don't think there's been strong Microsoft game releases. Microsoft Game Studios releases. I mean, Forza Horizon 4 was pretty successful. That's true. But it like that long ago. I believe almost every Forza Horizon, which is borderline just a copy-paste of the previous game, has also always done well. Um, That's fair. <laughs> it's kind of hard to it's go wrong when game. you're just selling people essentially NFTs of cars. <laughs> okay, they're not NFTs because they're not even unique, so get wrecked. No, they're, they're very easy to get. It's a fun game. It's a fun game. I'm not trash on it. I'm just saying it's a, it's, it's a bit of an easy win. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It, the game looks beautiful, and you race cars that are really fast, and they give you lots of dopamine hits by giving you lots of spins and free cars and money and blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Flight Simulator. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, Flight Simulator was a big, big W. Um, Anyways, either way, I just found that pretty interesting. Windows, on the other hand. I noticed that Conrad has not responded to my challenge yet. So, Conrad, let me know if you accept, and I will choose a game, and you will be embarrassed. <laughs> I promise. Uh, why don't we talk about the fall of Activision Blizzard, shall we? Okay. Yeah, this is another really fun one for me. It's at the point now where Microsoft had to issue a statement saying that they're going to have to evaluate their relationship with Activision yes. moving forward. Like, this is... And finally that, and getting the momentum that it deserves and that's not just blizzard right because bobby kotick is the the ceo of activision blizzard so that's that includes cod is essentially what i'm trying to get at because when this first when i first read that i was like oh why does that matter microsoft doesn't do much with like hearthstone or yeah, wow yeah. or whatever else but that yeah that includes cod that's a big deal when you're talking about consoles playstation has also had some murmurs about similar things as well um, so this is this is a big pressure for a massive moving game, which is Call of Duty. Um, more than 800, I believe it's significantly more than that at this point. Activision Blizzard employees and contractors have signed a petition calling for CEO Bobby Kotick to be removed. Good. Uh, apparently he knew about all the alleged rapes and other sexual misconducts for years, if not the entire time. Uh, he allegedly told an employee that he would have her killed um, I don't remember all the details behind that. I did read that. I just don't remember this moment. I believe he might have done something to her directly. I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Um, I, I I know the, the quote of saying that he was going to have her killed was a thing. I just don't remember the context around why. I don't know if she knew things or things were done to her or what. There's kind of no good reason. No, I'm just trying <laughs> to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, that's totally To be fair. very clear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it has also been reported that he's likely the one who penned the original email to employees claiming uh, all of these recent articles were false or only partially true. Um, good guy. Uh, the petition also calls for a new CEO to be chosen without Codex influence. Um, he has a substantial portion of the voting rights of the shareholders. He owns a lot of the company. Uh, the board of directors made a statement on Tuesday. Uh, the goals we have set for ourselves are both critical and ambitious. The board remains confident in Bobby Kotick's leadership, commitment, and ability to achieve these 
goals. Uh, this contrasts very strongly the no tolerance policy that Blizzard recently pushed out, which is not applying to Bobby Kotick, um, the rat. It's horrible. Get him out. <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> I've been trying to push this for, I think, like two months now or more. More than that, I think. Yeah. Like, you know this dude knew what was going on. It w should have been so clear from the start. I'm very happy this came out. He has a history of this type of stuff. I found it. It's not hard to find. It's on Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> um, With citations. Yes, yes. Which yeah. is key. Yeah. Um, like, I just... <laughs> To stop. Just stop. I don't even know what else to say. This is just horrible. Get him out of there. Clean it all up. Blizzard needs like Blizzard needs to fall back and regroup in a like really intense way. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, hey, we sent out a new LTT store newsletter. If you're not subscribed to it already, I will take a look at it for you. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Look, we're going to have a new sticker pack for next year. Hey, cool. I actually love love these. Um, this is this is going to be a pin soon. Sarah designed a oh, pin based nice. on this graphic. Uh, what else we got in here? Hey, look, look. There's a classic. Got the Linus and Luke uh, couch thing. It actually was going to be a fist bump, but I had concerns about the sticker ripping where the fists meet, oh. and I didn't want to just have like a big ugly border around it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's Those got, are cool. It's gotten to the point where I get involved in like a lot of like very random little things, um, <laughs> sort of running the company. Uh, fortunately, none of those things involve um, me needing to be to be ousted, which is good. <laughs> Yay! Not Bobby Kotick. Yeah. Very nice. I've set a very low bar for myself. <laughs> be better than Bobby Kotick. Yeah. Um. So that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> apparently yeah someone someone actually brought up in flow plane chat and i remember reading about this as well yeah one of the problems that they're having right now is that buying him out um oh. would be so costly and difficult um and that there's potential i don't know if this was true or not right again there's a few things in here that like this news hasn't marinated enough to really know all what what out of all of it is like super legit uh, but i think there's a clause in his contract that like makes him additionally very difficult to get rid of great outside of just needing to buy out his extremely substantial amount of shares um so i i suspect there's something going on there i suspect that's why the zero tolerance policy found a very quick found out very quickly that it's not exactly zero um yeah all right we should probably do some merch messages because there are some really good questions here. Some of them are not really good questions, are just ones that I had meant to uh, pop up on the thing, but I didn't catch it in time because the uh, the delay is not long enough. Conrad. <laughs> um, Jersey Statham says the sub subliminal messaging finally activated in my brain. Nice. Love it. You were a little slow, um, <laughs> slow on the uptake, but that's good. Eventually we got through to you. That's the goal. Um, <laughs> James M says celebrating getting my daily driver to number 20, 25 in Time Spy Extreme on Hardware Bot. Pretty oh. freaking awesome. Looking forward to the uh, air conditioned daily driver that you guys teased last week. Yeah, that's going to be a heck of a video. Lots of, lots of fun, me and Alex. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, guys, when I announce that we're talking about them, is not the time to place orders. It's the time for you to have already placed an order. Uh, <laughs> all right, because I, I, we can't do all of them. Uh, Michael V says, in terms of environmental impact, I love what Microsoft did with the ocean plastic mouse, but if they cared, wouldn't it be in more flagship devices that anyone actually wants? Um, yeah, I think that's a very good point. However, one of the challenges around sustainable materials can actually be getting enough of it because yeah. you can only make what happens to exist right? So you don't necessarily want your flagship product that you're going to make the most of to be made out of a material that you can only get if other people like waste, waste and throw things. away other stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's tough. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Jonathan A says, you said before a big issue with some distros is you can brick them just by updating. Well, I mean, I, I didn't, wasn't generalizing about that. I just happened to have <laughs> that problem. Garuda actually creates a restore point at each update. Um, that's fair. Although my issue, oh, it apparently gives an option to restore it before the OS boots. Okay, that's super cool. Uh, also says, I'm visually impaired. Can you make merge messages visible at cart? Um, I'm not sure if I quite understand the question. I don't. Can you make them visible at cart? I'm, not, um, I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah, maybe someone in float plane chat, chat can. Or of... fire a. This is not oh, technically. Oh, you can send a message to support, I guess. Yeah, but you should send it to float plane support. Yeah, support at floatplane.com. Yeah. Um, I know that's like uh, kind of odd, but yeah, send it there. Uh, Matthew asks, what are my thoughts on the Channel Super Fun house video? Uh, Matthew says, best Channel Super Fun video ever, IMO, better than Nerd Sports. <laughs> I have not watched it. So Dennis and Ethan asked me if I could not watch it so that I could do a reaction video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we haven't had a chance. This week's been super busy gearing up for my trip. I haven't traveled in a while. So all the kind of the, the workflows are a little rusty. Okay. It's been a couple of years actually. And uh, we, we just haven't gotten it together. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. And you guys will get to hear all of my thoughts as I go through it. I will say... I was straight up stunned that it took so long for me to find them. Yeah, which I, I was like, gaming I had, and stuff. I had to, yeah, I had to put myself in your shoes a few times because I'd be like, oh, that was the mistake. He's got them, and then you wouldn't get them. And, but I had to c kind of think like, okay, you've got kids in the house. You're probably used to these like random noises all the time. Like, yeah, like uh, stuff moves around in my house. My wallet was cats. missing for three months. <laughs> because my daughter put it in her school backpack. So at the end of the school year, it was just in there. I had no reason to open that. We didn't find it till September. Oh my goodness. And I was sure that it hadn't left the house because I hadn't left the house. So I was like, well, it's here somewhere. <laughs> like, unless it was stolen by the insulation guys that are working on the insulation in the roof, which I don't think it was. They seem like good blokes. Then it's in here somewhere, so I didn't replace any of my cards, thankfully. Yeah. Because I knew I had it. It was just a matter of where. Yeah. I had searched the house high and low so many times. I was driving around with no license for like almost oh, three months. <laughs> my. Well, that's not good. I mean, I have a license. I just the air tag wasn't thing, on me. I thought it was pretty interesting so, too. So I I I've read some of the comments on it. So I do know some stuff. I legitimately blanked. It looked like an AirTag to me, but it didn't compute. Have you ever have you ever seen someone that you know well, but in a context where you wouldn't as easily recognize them and it taken a while? Yeah. So I tend because to Because your be, brain's like, that can't be. I tend yeah. to be a very associative uh I tend to have a very associative memory. So if I had seen that thing on Jonathan Horst's desk. I'd have oh, gone. Okay. Yeah. Boom. The oh, Mac you're working guy. on an AirTag video. Yeah. I don't own an Air. I've seen AirTags twice. Once, um, D Brand sent them as like a sponsor spot, and I looked at it. And one other time, when I looked at Apple's event, that's it. I don't use them. I don't own any. Um. So so when I pulled that thing out of my pocket, I was like. Oh, this looks like an AirTag, but there's no reason that an AirTag should be in my pocket. I'll, I'll put this down and I'll figure it out later. I'll deal with it later. And because it had the dbrand sticker on it, none of the Apple branding was visible. So I thought conceivably it could be some weird little thing that my daughters have that has like a picture of it's like a little like to toy or like a tiddly wink like i didn't know what it was i was just like oh yeah there's like this thing in my pocket i'll deal with this later so i hacked it on my nightstand because i was like there's no reason for this to be in my pocket <laughs> um if i had if i had thought even if i thought this is what do you tag, think from that yeah i wouldn't have i honestly wouldn't have thought anything of it i'd have thought oh this made its way you must home have from, like seen it somewhere weird and picked it up to maybe one of the camera guys put one in one of the camera bags so that we wouldn't lose our camera bag for some reason and then left it in there and it fell out when they were at the house people come in and out of my house all the time with tech crap maybe it fell out and maybe one of my kids was playing with it and it ended up in my pants 
That is a perfectly yeah. that is a perfectly yeah. conceivable way that an air tag could have gone from Jonathan Horst's desk to my pants pocket entirely innocently. And I just it's it's my I got my weekend brain on. Like Yeah. Yeah. There's people that on account of that and I I think some other things are sure that it is staged. And I'm like Oh, I yeah. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. Not only did I know that it wasn't because I was actually supposed to be a part of it. Yeah. I don't know if you even knew that part. Uh no, they told me that. They told okay, me that. Yeah. yeah. They didn't make it that far. I'm not surprised, guys. Could have done a better job. They were trying to make it interesting, which is I mean, the job. I so, get it. I mean it, it worked. It's the first banger channel super fun that we've had in a very long it's time. It's a fun watch. And it's it, a fun they they did a fantastic job. Like I'm looking at the analytics and it's uh it's gone from kind of like leveling off Whoa. to schwomp L algorithm do like. Yeah. So it's nice. it's going now. Great job, Ethan and Dennis. Um I did see one comment that they were surprised at my reaction to finding people in my house. Like my first my honestly, what I was thinking when I walked up to them and I was like, did I ruin the video? Was this was the wrong move. Because I knew it was Dennis, 100%. Because he was smiling oh, the way that he does. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, the A move now would have been to pretend I didn't pretend see you them. didn't notice them. Yeah. And like then start messing with them. Oh. Flip the script. <laughs> That would have been the A move. Oh my goodness, like, that sneak, actually could have been so funny. Figure out what they're doing because I have access to the security cameras. I could have easily tracked their movements. So I could have figured out what they're doing. I could have start messing, started messing with their stuff, <laughs> which would have been amazing. <laughs> put like the body pillow like, in man, the Like man, the kind of stuff I could have done, like I could have put like, I could have put a bunch of, you know, those uh, st- those anchor speakers that we did the hundred speaker oh my thing. I could have put a bunch of them like stash kind of around the bed and then just like triggered them in the middle of the night and stuff <laughs> like, man, there was so much potential and I totally wasted it. But I don't know how else you react to that though. That's because okay. like when, when, when you spotted him at first, it was such a genuine, like what? <laughs> so how do you not do that? You know, like that's, yeah, I, yeah. Oh man! Oh well. If Ethan had hid better, I might not have like caught them. But Ethan was just like standing there. Yeah, that was. And as soon as I saw Ethan, I was like, "Channel super fun." Mm. Dennis, it could have been anything. If Dennis had just played it cool and been like, "Oh yeah, did Yvonne not tell you we're going we're going running today?" I'd have been like, "Oh yeah, no, she didn't tell me. Why were you in the backyard?" Okay, whatever. You know what? Forget it. It's just Dennis things. <laughs> like if 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 Ethan had hidden and Dennis had like played it cool, I, yeah, they could have gotten away with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Dennis could have done whatever it is that you know, arts and crafts night with Yvonne or whatever. Like they see each other outside of work. Um, they could have done whatever. Dennis could have left, could have snuck back into the house, and I would have been none the wiser, one hundred percent. One thing that this has definitely. Um, brought to light for me is that my wife could absolutely be having an affair <laughs> <laughs> like my observation level you know a little it, low clearly clearly extremely low so you know if anyone was thinking man i'd love to make a move on that but <laughs> you know linus would you know use his youtuber influence to make my life miserable or whatever clearly i'd never notice <laughs> Uh, what else we got for, oh for merch messages here? Uh, Max asks, what is the float plane <laughs> release schedule for the remaining Linux challenge videos? They're coming. Yes. Part two is edited. I believe the plan is for it to go up this weekend. Ooh, that nice. is the goal. If I just delete these, are they deleted, deleted? Or like, what is it? What happens? Deleted, can I, deleted. Can I delete them to just manage ones that I, I'm not going to do anything with? You can. They'll oh. just be like gone, though. I okay. think there's a deleted well, that's section. Fine. It's a, the deleted thing's a little weird. Yeah, maybe it could just be archive, and then it could just go down to the very bottom. Yeah, because there's a deleted section. So yeah, archive would probably make yeah, sense. Yeah, so if I could just, yeah, I'll just delete the ones that I've already dealt with here. Yeah. 
Uh, Mikhail says, uh, could you please make an LTT about the current state of optical media technology? Things like triple layer discs, M-disc, and so on. I believe we covered M-disc at some point. That may have been on NCIX Tech Tips. Uh, yeah, you and I did an M-disc episode like 10 years ago. So Yeah, so the current state, yes, uh, we did do that. The current state of optical media appears to be <sighs> not that different from nine years ago. Um, <laughs> so I guess no update is needed. Look at this guy. Look at, look at his hair. It's ridiculous. He looks like an idiot. Why is the TV behind him instead of screen capture? Look at this. Why doesn't he care about his appearance? It's awful. It's There's awful. a bunch of glare on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Premium. <laughs> As if it would have looked any better if you shot it. Wait, you did shoot I it. I did shoot it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. there you go. I was probably asleep. Probably. He used to legitimately <laughs> fall asleep in the chair. Um, Minz says, got some chicken nuggies. Very nice. Um, all right. Hey, thanks, Michael M. Love it. And uh, Merry Christmas, Alex, is the message there. Dara, uh, found out this week I'm having a daughter. Heck yeah. Getting the ABCs of gaming for the daughter and a friend of mine who's also having a baby. Freaking A. Fantastic. Love it. All right. Uh, delete now. <laughs> What's the? Okay, I already responded to this one. Uh, John G, when are you going to start selling LTT pants and socks? I want to wear LTT from head to toe so that if I'm going to be a walking advertisement, I can at least do it properly. So, fun fact. You ready? <gasps> I am actually wearing prototype LTT socks. Yes, so finally. They are merino wool. They have uh, extra padding in the toes and the heel. They have extra venting on the top. So whether you have an open shoe or a closed shoe, uh, you can expect to get a little bit more airflow on the top. Um, they right now are extremely close in terms of the density of the weave that I wanted, like in terms of durability. Um, I still need to wash this pair to find out if we've solved the pilling problem. And I would still like to see if we can reduce the slipperiness of the sock. I like a little bit more grip. But overall, um, this is my first de day with this demo pair. I am pretty darn happy. Um, and if you guys want, I can, uh, I can go get some pants right now. So why don't you do a couple more merch yeah. messages? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I'll be, uh, I'll be right back. Sound yeah. good? All right. Yeah. Um, AJG says, when's female clothing coming to LTT store? As far as my understanding goes, they are working on it in addition to other kind of more like sizing options, things like, like tall, wide, etc. Um, but, but it takes time. It's difficult to do that kind of stuff. Uh, allocation right now is difficult, etc., etc., etc. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it is a, it is something that they want to do. Also female underwear as well. As far as my understanding goes, that is also included in the previous statement that I said, but I could be wrong. Maybe hit up Nick on Twitter. Um, and then it says also sup other AJ watching on Flowplane. Nice. Heck yeah. Brandon R says, thanks for being half my closet and keeping my love of tech alive. Going to school uh, for networking now. Keep up the great work. Go Flowplane. Heck yes. Thank you very much. Bought a bunch of bananas. Anonymous said, just got HDMI 2.1 2 2x2 2 switch and was wondering if that cable tester you have can test anything with HDMI splitters, splitters, switches, and capture cards. No idea. Sorry. Uh, Christopher H. Thoughts on... What is this? TLDR. Lab open source slash LTT license community contributions. Ooh, yeah, I doubt it. Um... Maybe there's certain ways that we can like validate that stuff. We can maybe look into that. Um, I'll maybe check that thread out later, but there's a lot of potential issues there. That's a that's quite the minefield. So yeah. P.S. Luke, hope that 5950X is still slinging bits after the pair. It absolutely is. So heck yeah. Land joggers. Cool. So nice. I like the zipper pockets too. We wanted to, uh, oh, I guess you guys probably won't be able to hear me very well. I'm just going to change real quick. Um, oh, okay. Oh, uh, is this allowed on Twitch? I don't think so. Okay. 
okay. Well, but if you're legitimately behind the chair. Yeah, I'm behind the chair. Yeah, he's behind the chair. Should be no problem. It's fine. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Land joggers, ladies and gentlemen. That matches the hoodie pretty well. Of course it does. It's made out of exactly the same material. Oh, they're WAN joggers. They're WAN joggers. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because they have the logo on the other pocket too. Yeah. So there's the... Uh, it's like a stealth logo. Yeah. Wow, that's With super pockets, cool. Extra pockets on the inside. Dude, once you have yeah. those in socks... WAN. That's cool. Um, I don't have to own any other clothes. Yeah. Another zipper pocket on the back, just in case... Condom pocket. <laughs> That's actually our internal name for all pockets that have no obvious purpose. <laughs> <laughs> With the joke being that, like, our audience definitely needs lots of condoms. <laughs> um, <laughs> when they buy this merch, they do. Yeah, oh, when they buy this merch, uh, nice. they do. Yeah. Um, so, got the orange drawstrings. Uh, another zipper pocket. Uh, kind of, like, cool... Uh, just like accents, stitching, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I think the fit's awesome, obviously. Sorry, I know you guys can't really hear me very well, but uh, I'm back now. It looks good. So that's them. Wan joggers are on a ship, and they're coming. Um, man, we've got there's so much stuff coming. We've got some nice like stretchy shorts. Oh, coming. so those are those are done, and they're just yeah. on the way. Yeah, this nice. is, I, I pulled this out of the size run. Sweet. This is final, final spec. Awesome. Yeah, I'm extremely excited. These are, I mean, the only the only problem is that they are, we just won't have enough of them. Um, Conrad asks, aren't those just American Apparel sweatpants? Absolutely not. These are our own custom. They are using exactly the same material as the WAN hoodie. Uh, someone asked if the zippers are YKK. If they're not, um, my merch team is fired because I told them we only use YKK zippers. Actually, I think some of the little hidden ones might not be. So the only time we don't use YKK is when um, there is, for whatever reason, not a YKK one available. Uh, yeah, it's, it is on the sample. Sometimes we don't have YKK zippers on our samples because they're just a fit sample. But when it comes to uh, actual merch that we ship, I'm just like, uh, it's one of the few blind brand loyalties that I have is... That whenever a factory tries to sell us on anything other than a YKK zipper, I'm just like, uh, no, fe, no fe. thanks. And it's a big problem because they've had supply issues, like everyone, and costs have gone on zippers. <laughs> just really sucks. Yeah, because it's not just we we talk about it as a silicon shortage or whatever, but it's it's like materials, like kind of almost in general. Captain Observant asks, why is the zipper backwards on the stealth hoodie? because most people wouldn't notice, but you're Captain Observant. Uh, it's, we just didn't think about it, <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest with you. The zipper's backwards? Uh, it's, it's on the opposite side. Usually oh. it's like one side for female clothes or one side for male, but it's different rules in Commonwealth countries and the US. I don't know, Bridget explained it to me once and I glazed over. I was just like, whatever, I don't care. For me, I don't have a muscle memory for that. I just figure it out and zip up my jacket like i don't yeah i don't i i, I it doesn't cost me a lot of extra brain cycles so yeah yeah uh anyway so hopefully that answers your question it's coming it's coming uh i heard you answer a few more are you deleting the ones that you're done with or uh no i'm getting a little lost in how this organization is okay working. so the curated ones i moved them ones down there that were not ones that i wanted to show up there but were ones that i wanted to acknowledge okay in then some everything and in incoming is done Okay. So I'll, I'll delete them up. You can keep going. Perfect. All right. Uh, Julian says, love your videos. Hey, thanks, Julian. Have you guys considered making a video comparing different search engines? For example, I use DuckDuckGo not for its privacy, but for the convenience of Bang Search. No, I have not considered making a video about uh, comparing different search engines. Um, yes. No, I have not. Um, I don't know that we would do that. I think that's probably... That's probably going to be a, a tough sell. I don't, I don't think that would perform particularly well. Um, Paul says, undies. Hi, I'm Paul. I don't know why I moved that into curated. Oh, probably because I just missed the notification because Conrad didn't give me enough time. Speaking of which, <laughs> we have an update on the Conrad challenge. Uh, Conrad says, I can pick any game. 
Give him two weeks to learn it, and he will beat me. Conrad, I'm sorry to do this to you, but I really just, I'm kind of feeling hungry, and I really want someone to buy me lunch, so I choose Beat Saber. I'd give you two months to play Beat Saber. But I've been known to I don't make, think you should have any training time. I've been known to make concessions. I think he should just play you, like, right no, away. Training time he said fine. any game, boom. No, like there, there was no. I'm fine with two weeks. I don't think he David. It. David still owes me. Uh, still owes me a, cause... and I beat you at Beat Saber uh, uh, yeah. challenge. He says the end of the month. By the way, for the people who keep up asking oh, about okay. that. All right. So Conrad, uh, you've got two weeks to get better than me at Beat Saber. Good luck. Okay. Epic. Good that luck. That could have gone a couple different directions, but that yeah, was... I could have gone with Forged Alliance. That's that's a game that is not easy to pick up in two weeks, even if you're a very experienced gamer. Um, like Luke is a better gamer than me, pretty much any genre. Like we sit down and play a conventional, uh, RTS like Starcraft or something like that. And he will absolutely destroy me. Not but Forged Alliance. Forged Alliance is just, it hits a little different. Not even close. Um, it's like a full-time job keeping up with the meta, even though it's like a 12 year old game or whatever. <laughs> okay. What else we got here in the merch messages? Uh, any plans for heavier winter wear? Asks Eric W. Yes, we do. So remember, if you are subscribed to the LTT store um, newsletter, newsletter. Yeah. you'll have seen that we did a, a post about this like 3D printed down style like material. Um, we have a jacket that would be meant to kind of go on top of a hoodie. Like it's not a super insulated one, but it's like a layering up kind of shell. Uh, waterproof. Uh, we're working on that. We also have a windbreaker that's even lighter than that. It's just a pure shell. Uh, we're working on that. Um, I don't know if either of those is going to make it for this winter, but the thing about LTT store is that we're not really constrained in the same way that a lot of more traditional clothing businesses are. If right. we if we miss a season, we're like, F it, we'll launch it anyway. That sucks. Oh, well. Yeah, people yeah. in Australia can buy it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> what do what do we care? I mean, we care, obviously. It'd be nice to, you know, we have literally millions of dollars deployed right now in merch that we have purchased but have not received and cannot sell and therefore cannot make back our investment on. Uh, obviously, we definitely want to sell stuff. Yeah. But yeah. it's not like we're under the same kind of pressure where if we if we miss it by a month, you know, now it's on fire sale and we're it's, selling it's it at a loss. following whatever various current fashion trends, whatever. And we literally can't reuse it next year. Like, it's yeah. not like that. So it yeah. makes life a little bit easier for us. But that, uh, man, I really like that uh, that that shell jacket with the, the printed down type material inside it. It's, it's super warm. It's super comfy. It's got like a really nice hand feel to it. I really like it. Uh, that, that's a garment where... Sometimes you start with what your goal is in terms of the finished product. So with WAN Hoodie V2, we started with the goal of making WAN Hoodie, but like better. Um, and then we went and we found, we sourced materials and we sourced construction methods. Like we figured it out. Um, with the jacket, we found a material we really liked. And we were like, let's make a garment now. <laughs> So it can kind of go both ways. I was asking yeah. Bridget about it, and apparently that's actually more common than you might think, to find a really cool material and then be like, okay, we have to do something what with this. What can we do with this? What is its best application? Yeah. Um, thoughts between Valve Index or HTC Vive? Money is not an issue. Well, if money is not an issue, I mean, the index is obviously the way to go, Jose. But I also just got a review unit of the Pimax 8K or Pixmax or whatever they're called. I think Pimax. And uh, also their 5K one, which I believe supports an even higher refresh rate than the Index. So I'm going to have a video coming on those once I get a chance to really try and daily drive them. Also, like, is he talking about the the Vive Flow or I'm not sure Pro which Vive. Or? It almost doesn't matter because if you're going for the highest possible it's performance, true. the Index is it's better. It's, yeah. it's there. Uh, Christian asks, what's your favorite color? I feel like I've answered this question on WAN Show before. I'm not six. So I don't have a favorite color. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite color? Like not really. No. Okay. I used to like answer that with red, but now at this point it's like, well, no, not really. I don't know. So I don't know. Um, it's just kind of, yeah, yeah, whatever. Good album. Good yeah. album. Re-released yeah. recently. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a cool suggestion from Anonymous. 
I think it was last WAN show, someone asked about fashionable anti-static wrist straps. Yeah. But I was wondering if it would be possible to make an anti-static watch strap. Oh. So you just get a watch strap that's like just a, a broadly compatible watch strap. Then you just have like an anti-static doohickey on there. And then you can just clip on and clip off and you never have to take on, put like, on and take off I your like strap ever again. like standard G-Shock with a little thing Yeah, would be awesome. That's actually a brilliant idea. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Um, I, I like it. I'm going to email it to Nick. Nice. Do you want to do another one while I do that? Sure. V this is from Anonymous. Very qualified for LTT lab position. Has pu has published four academic papers and one patent. Damn, Daniel. But can't start for at least six months. PhD thesis defense. And don't have Canadian work visa. That's a bit of an issue. Live That's tough. USA. But if you have those kinds of credentials, it's a lot easier to get you in here, which is one of the reasons yes. that I didn't bring that True. up to the same degree as I have in the past in the hiring video. So you have to have like mean credentials like that though. Yep. Um, he says, should I bother applying? Absolutely. I would. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Luke, what led you to using, oh, that jumped around. Oh, goodness. Um, Angular. So using Angular over React, Vue, or others. Uh, love the channel and love what LTT is doing for tech. Um, my developers were like, hey, we want to use this. And I was like, sweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, there was, it was a... Good management, Luke. It was a conversation over a decently extended period of time, but um, two of the main developers that do most of the work that would be that part of the project wanted to use Angular, so... Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not going to butcher your name. Um, so I, I'm going to go with IV, your initials. Um, hey, from Brazil, any chance of an iOS job position opening? Um, we have one dev that actually does both Android and iOS He's for us. Chad. And he is, uh, that's probably the word that I would use. So we don't need another one right now because he is too overpowered. Yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah, you heard it here first, but uh, there's probably going to be a raise in his future when we talk about that pretty soon. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. I think that guy's name was Isaac. Um, oh, is that how I think it's just that? A, I think it's just an interesting spelling. Oh, like Isaac. a more like South American kind so. of spelling. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Joel says, I started watching your videos back in 2014. They helped me much in my oh, career we don't in also, IT. Oh, we don't only use Angular, just to be clear. Sorry. Um... Building my first PC, I started mining this year. You helped me get ahead, so time to pay it back a little. Um, mining, not exactly a popular popular thing with the PC community at the moment. Although, can I can I kind of go off script a little bit here? I think there's a lot of closet miners in oh, the gaming community. Yeah, like I think there's a lot of hate, but I think there's a lot of closet. When mining there's when going there's on. so much hate around a subject like that, a huge amount of the population that is receiving the hate is just going to not talk about it. So you don't know they're there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's a bit of a thing. So there's that. Uh, hey, thanks, Joe. Uh, anonymous. You should make more all-black stuff. Really nice for work. Also, an all-black desk pad would be cool. We have an all-black desk pad coming. It's going to have like a circuit design, kind of like the wall in the lounge, but it's going to be black on black. So like stealth circuit desk pad. Um, We've actually had a lot of feedback cool. that um, people in, in different like working situations are able to wear the all black stuff. Um, like last show when I was just doing these, we had feedback from multiple different people that they worked in environments where they were not allowed to wear things with branding and logos, mm -hmm. but they were able to get away with the stealth <laughs> stuff, nice. which I found pretty interesting. People in, in like filming departments that can't wear anything other than right. all black stuff. Uh, there was another one that I, I don't remember the context, but he could only wear all black stuff. Uh, yeah, it was kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, w honestly, the where that came from was wanting the product to be good enough that people would want to buy it even if it wasn't merch. Yeah. That's the idea. That's where the whole yeah. stealth name came from, like repping a brand without without wanting everyone around you to be like, Linus, who's Linus? You know, that kind of thing. Or without, um, yeah, without having to defend it, for one thing. And then the other part is because I feel like it puts more pressure on us to do better than just, well, we took this cafe press thing and yeah. we yeah, yeah. silk screened our logo onto it. Um, we didn't always have the time and resources to do that, but it's definitely something that we're trying to do now. Mm -hmm. uh, Pratush, Pratresh, 
says, love the show. Given Apple's repair programs, how do you see right to repair factor in with integrated SOCs considering their performance and efficiency improvements? So you're never going to be able to repair yeah. an SOC like yourself. Um, but that doesn't mean that right to repair can't still make devices with SOCs more repairable. So, you know, whether it's um, it depends, it making depends schematics available yeah. so that you could swap the SOC or whether it's, um, whether it's at least not going out of your way to put encryption keys on the SOC where there's no way to, where all your data is gone immediately when you lose access to it. There's no way to even enter the the shared uh, or not the shared whatever the there's there's no way to decrypt it mm. even if you knew the password right if the yeah. if all the encryption data is stored on the SOC even though the storage is somewhere else like there's ways that you can make a device more repair friendly even if it's tightly integrated which does have clear performance benefits so it's just an attitude problem at the end of the day. Uh, Cody says, I play Warhammer Vermin Verminitide too? Vermintide. Vermintide. Oh, is it just spelled wrong? Whatever. Maybe, Doesn't but it's, it's Vermintide. Yeah. Uh, is that a new game? No. But it allows you to select the number of CPU threads the game can use. Would you consider trying that game for CPU performance tests? Probably, Probably not. not. Uh, when we are looking at games that um, can stress a CPU, it's not necessarily that we're looking for that. I mean, if we wanted to restrict how many threads it was using, we could do that. Um, manually we could either disable cores in the bios we could um i think i don't know how well it works but you could pin the process to certain cores using windows um and really what we're looking for is games that are not very graphically demanding so that they're just a, so that the cpu becomes the bottleneck um that's that's really what we're looking for uh there's the organic chemist one wait oh no the organic chemist one was a different one Oh boy, I deleted it and now it's gone. I feel terrible. Well, uh, the is point it in is, the deleted section? I don't think we do have an organic chemist position. No. But then there was a there was a wife and the wife had credentials. Uh, Control F chemist. Uh, no, it's gone. Oh shoot. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I feel bad, but there is really nothing that I can do about it now. Uh, Ehor says, "Have you considered constraining the width of LTT store?" to some centered container that doesn't span across the whole width of your screen. They include in that comment, it looks a little weird on ultra wides and they are correct. It does look a little weird on ultra wides um, because it, it spans really wide. But you're if you're looking at me, like you're waiting for me to answer this question. But no, like, I'm, I'm giving you feedback because I don't, I don't know if you've tried it or not, but it spans really wide, but I yeah. believe it only shows four products wide or yeah. something. Um, so it, it is pretty funky, uh, and we are looking into doing more. The, one of the things that's holding us back a little bit from doing a lot of theming changes to the store right now is that there's this new hydrogen thing coming out. Um, right. It hit more of an open beta recently, but we were in more of like a closed beta program with it. Um, and we want to use that, but that is going to involve like a whole redo to the store. So I don't necessarily want to do a ton of little stuff like that right now because um, I'd rather put that work into the whole remake of the store. Got it. But yes, I hear you, and it's it's not great. Henry, could you consider a supplement to the Linux challenge, maybe episode seven, where Anthony <laughs> or someone goes over what to look for in a Linux distro for gaming and some that are particularly good for game compatibility for a new user? I think what we already learned through the Linux challenge is that Linux people are not going to have that much difficulty in any distro. Obviously, some will be easier than others. And non-Linux people, it is a barrier that is not reasonably overcomable if your only goal is to play games. If your goal is to play games and to learn Linux as a hobby, that's a completely separate question, in which case, go do your research on that. Or go distro hop for that's, a bit. that's sort of the whole point. Because that's that what you're point. doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joshua, uh, VMware Workstation Pro 16 added support for DirectX 11 and OpenGL 4.1 for virtual machines and games. It would be interesting to see a deep dive into what can be done with this feature. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. We haven't tooled around with VMware too much, and it seems like there'd be a bit of a learning curve for us to figure out what to do with something like that, but it's definitely cool. 
Uh, Zachary says, my father-in-law is the director of an amazing international nonprofit called Curious Learning. Uh, apps and content to increase literacy in developing countries. Would it be worth suggesting they reach out for a potential collab? We don't do a ton of collabs just for the sake of collab. And we tend to try to keep things pretty on topic. And by on topic, I mean like hardware on topic. Software is not really something that we've got a lot of audience overlap with, believe it or not. Yeah. There's certain categories that you would think um, intuitively would perform really well for us, but I was actually having a conversation with um, our tech wiki writer, John, about how you know gaming topics are not performing particularly well on that channel. And he's like, what, are they just not gamers? And it's like, well, it's not that they're not gamers. It's just that that might not be what they consume on YouTube, right? Yeah. Um, Michael asks, thoughts on some chip manufacturing being moved to the US and how slash when it will affect this shortage slash the market? Well, not for a few years, but yes, it should help but it also won't affect certain things. Um, like for example, one of the issues with the automotive industry is they're still just using a bunch of outdated crap that nobody wants to build more fab capacity for. So if and, they don't change that, then it's not gonna help. And, and this is part of your question, but fab capacity takes a long time to bring online. Um, and even when it is online, as far as my understanding goes, it takes a bit to get it efficient as well. Uh, Chris E, uh, yes, more WAN themed products like the pants that I'm wearing right now. Uh, would love to get your thoughts on DIY Perks custom PS5 chassis. I haven't actually seen it. Uh, sounds cool. Everything DIY Perks does is amazing. amazing. Yeah. Uh, Chris B, uh, this topic reminded me that I could use a new water bottle. So I went with the Stormtrooper look one in hopes it won't hit anything and will stay dent free for longer. That's very funny. Very funny, Chris. <laughs> get it? It won't hit anything. We've, we've actually had that joke a couple of times. Ha we? Have we already? All yeah. right. Well, that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, or Mal asks, any word on the new kids book? I haven't started it yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I'll you are making one point. though. Uh, the, I want to do a counting book. I want to do a colors book, shapes book. I just, uh. <laughs> also is LTX 2022 happening? So far, that is the tentative plan. We're going to try. We're going to give it a shot. Uh, Hunter, been watching since the Langley House. Love the way your channel's going. Would you say Secret Lab chairs are comfy? So they sponsored this show, full disclosure. Like they were a sponsor of the WAN show. But uh, before Secret Lab had sponsored us, um, we talked about them in Alex's Intel Extreme Tech Upgrade. And as far as I can tell, they're using exactly the same materials as Maxnomic, who I've been an advocate for through sponsorship and not sponsorship for many years now. I think they're good quality chairs. Uh, they don't have a lot of the same issues as the other gaming chairs. They are still, they have that look, right? But uh, the material quality is significantly better than a lot of the really bad gaming chairs out right. there. Yeah. Um, final two, last two, Eduardo. Oh wait, this is more asking about LTT socks. Okay, I already answered that. What's up, Eduardo? Uh, and Matthew, can Floatplane get merch discount codes like the YouTube join channel? Uh, yes, I don't see why not, but I don't know if we have a mechanism for it yet. Uh, we, we can we can get it working, though. Okay. Do you want to like throw that in the dock or whatever? It's there. And do you want to throw this show to being over? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Anthony says, short answer, re, good distro for gaming. There isn't a best distro for gaming. Distros are little more than package management and defaults. Yeah. That's fair. There are some that are set up to get going more easily, but as we've seen, easy isn't necessarily universal depending on package stability and hardware configuration. Also, the, the easiness, in my opinion, is almost nothing. Like, you pre-install the graphics driver, which takes literally seconds in a lot of operating systems and in some in distros distros sorry uh and and like in in the case of mint it was this big pop-up in the corner that was like do you want to do the thing and i was like yup and it was like cool i did it for you and that was the only gap cool like it's not the hard part um pick the distro that has the most comfortable defaults and go from there linux challenge part seven is now over <laughs> Fair enough, Anthony. Mic drop, mic drop, Anthony. All right, and yeah. we're done.